presenting The Pile, a CSS and HTML mini web machine that replaces many use cases for Position Absolute. It offers keyword alignments, optional Z index management, no container collapsing, I'm looking at you container with absolute children, and it can be intrinsically sized based on content. This icon button uses the pile, this logo uses the pile, these icons use a pile, that uses a pile, this demo uses a pile, and a super rad and animated in 3D. Anyway, this GUI challenges comparison used the pile, this card stack used the pile, and last but not least, this stories demo from GUI challenges used the pile. <laughs> You're watching Mini Web Machines on Chrome Developers, where we dive into small groups of code that drive rad user experiences. No JavaScript in today's Mini Web Machine, it's all HTML and CSS. So we've got a div container and just any sort of children. We're using spans here, and then we're going to set the container to display grid, target each child, and put them in the same area, one and one. And this is going to set them to the same row and the same column. Essentially, it's a grid of only one cell, or one row, one column. And when we assign them all to the same one, they pile on top of each other. So here, you can see it go from natural to the pile. You can also, once this is set up, align all of the different elements as a group. So you can say place content or align content and move them all together. You can also specify individually that they place themselves into somewhere as an exception. So you can put them all in the middle, but this one is over here on the edge. Here's that mini web machine again, and then let's go see what else it can do. Like an icon button, we've stacked the label, an input, and an SVG all on top of each other by setting them to the same grid area. This VizBug logo is a pile on top of a pile. So there's a pile for the logo container that's got the head and the thorax, and then a pile for the thorax that contains the wings on top of the body. So many use cases. And then we've got this kind of cool blobs where we're stacking multiple blob SVGs on top of each other just for funsies. Did you catch the mini web machine variant syntax there? It's still display grid, but the rows and the columns are defined and named. A one of our row is named stack and a one of our column is named stack. We're still a single cell grid, but this names both the row and column the same name, making the next part read really nice, like assigning all the children to the same row and column, stack. Nothing fundamentally different between like the stack variant and the pile, but you could argue that the stack contains a little bit more of a cleaner intent in the code. Also, side note, stack was an early name that I used for the pile layout machine, but I later changed it because you can have stacks that aren't necessarily piles, but piles are always piles. They're on top of each other, and I just thought it just fit the intent better. The pile is used here to put the caption contents on top of a reflected version of the image, kind of creating a cool effect. The pile is used here to disguise all the layers that it takes to make an element box on the web, which I then reveal on hover with some CSS transforms for a neat illustration into the box model. This GUI challenge uses the pile to overlay a before and after container on top of each other. The simple layout machine is then part of another simple machine that wires up an input type range to a custom property for use within a mask, and voila, two mini web machines coming together for a very rad result. This card stack GUI challenge uses the pile mini web machine, but it tries to be cute by naming the row GUI and the column challenges. It's just fun to write grid area GUI challenges, but notice the size of the column. It's not 1FR. This is showcasing that the container grid can size the row and column without taking the children into account, if it wants to. Lastly, this GUI challenge for thinking on how a stories component could be built uses a horizontal scroll snap setup for each of the user stories and the pile mini web machine for each of the images from a user. So then JavaScript watches for taps on either the right side of the component or the left side and contextually adjusts the opacity of the images in the pile. So while you might think that mini web machines are always going to have JavaScript or something like that in them, um, they're not. Sometimes they're going to be just CSS machines that through small combinations of code, you can create really powerful and reliable systems. And this one, the pile, is no exception. I've been using this over and over and over again, and I really hope it fits into your tool belt just as well as it's fit into mine. And that was today's mini web machine, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, y'all.